Welcome to Sunshine Art and Drawing. Today I wanted to show you these two products that I got from Aldi. Now Aldi is a new supermarket to Australia, but they're an old school brand from Germany. They are um, just essentially a, a large supermarket brand. So a lot of the time when you're struggling to find art supplies or if you're trying to save some money, supermarkets and other discount stores can be really, really useful for finding simple art supplies like pencils and textures and paper and stuff like that that you're going to always need. Like I always find I need paper. It's the number one thing I run out of first is being able to draw on something. So I grabbed this book because it's 120 pages and the paper is 110 GSM which is not bad. If you think printer paper is between 80 and 100 GSM so it's a little bit thicker than printer paper. It's nice bright white paper, doesn't have a weird cast on it and it's also nice and smooth but not too smooth. It's got like a little tiny bit of a tooth to it so just a tiny bit of a texture. But other than that, relatively smooth. It's going to be really good, I think, for colour pencil drawing. So, I don't think it would be thick enough for watercolour, but I can definitely test that out. I've got some watercolours here, and we can give that a go. So here, I'm just going to list out the products that I used in order. So at the top here, these are just some regular cheap gel pens in sort of an orange, a blue, and some glittery colours. I tested out a couple of crayons and a oil pastel. They worked all perfectly good. I also did some thick and thin lines with some regular water markers, just the Crayola super tips, and a little bit with the Crayola twistable kind of crayons. And they all worked fine. I did some pencil at the top. That was really good. I think this is really paper made for pencils. And here I'm just doing some watercolour um, pencil and adding a little bit of water with my water brush, which worked fine, no breaking up of the paper. And then I grabbed my watercolour palette and I put a little bit of watercolour here and there. And I also did this section in the middle where I put thicker and thin watercolour and then different colours on top of each other. Just to see if the paper would break up or break apart or start peeling. And I also grabbed a good amount of green and did a big slosh there just to have a very wet piece to see what would happen, whether the water would go through. Down the bottom here I'm just doing some sharpies and other markers just to see how they worked and on the side here I'm just doing a little bit more markers some Crayola pencils at the top and then I just used a fountain pen to do a little bit of ink at the bottom just to see if there was any problems with the ink now I'm going to pop this to the side and let it dry and while this is drying we can do our lovely engraving eagle so in this set here I've already opened it but you get a engraving tool which is this little red spatula type tool. You also get a beautiful bird with some flowers and this lovely, I think it's an eagle. And you also get just a little test piece of paper so you can test out your tool and see how it works. And I grabbed a sheet of scrap paper so that um, I can do this without making too much mess. Now the instructions on the back state that you need to experiment with different techniques on your little testing board. So Let's give that a go. What I might do, because it's black and this background is black, I might flip this over because it's sort of grey on the other side, which will make it a little easier to see. So let's test this little piece of paper out. And it should... Yeah, it's gold underneath. So if you kind of... I can show you the different ways it makes lines. If you go pointed, it makes like sharp lines. And if you kind of go from the side, you can get a bit thicker lines. That's quite cool. Yeah, you kind of have to go on an angle if you want to do a swirl. So, like that. So as you can see, it's like quite a comfortable little tool. It's kind of like a little bit triangular in the shape of it, so that does make it handy. I somehow have glitter on myself. Interesting. Anyway, so you can kind of just practice a few of the little designs, and it's actually like a gold. Um, let's see if I can get it in the light. It's like a gold kind of underneath. Now, with this one, um, I think I might do the eagle. What they've done is they've printed the design on top of the scratchy material. So if you follow the design, you should get an eagle, some flowers, mountains, and some clouds. I've also um, popped in an order to get some of this type of paper, but just blank. So I thought maybe that might be a fun thing to do. So, what I will do is I might start with a little bit of coffee. I've got a little bit of coffee here, as I always do. 
have a little sippy of that and I will get started. Now it does say to begin at the top of your board and work your way down. Present, prevent your fingertips from marking the board by adding a sheet of paper, which I have grabbed here, underneath your hand. Once you have finished working on your picture, brush off your excess scrapings with a damp cloth. So I think I might start from the top. So let's get started on this eagle. I'm going to start by doing the little clouds at the top. And as I started, I noticed that it is a little bit of a learning curve. You don't get these lines perfect the first time you do them. And it's a little bit hard to do curved lines. It's really easy to do straight lines. So all these little curved feathers and things, I looked at this picture and went, oh dear, it's going to be pretty hard. But you get the hang of it pretty quickly. And I also recommend to do like the outline of what you're doing first. That kind of gives you an idea of the sections that you're doing and so on, which is what I did here. I sort of did the outline of the bird's feathers and only did like the big major feathers as I came to them. And that sort of made it a bit easier um, as I sort of got to these larger sections because I could kind of section it off. So I'm just doing the top layer of these feathers as well, which probably the hardest part is to do this little sort of curved U shape. I found if you just come down one side about to the halfway point and then do the other side down to the halfway point, that seems to make it easier to get that nice kind of curved look that these feathers are going for. And although it doesn't really look like I'm doing much, the, um, the gold printing that's on top of this black layer is kind of like a dull colour and when you scratch through and get to the layer that is the actual like shiny gold it's really noticeable in person so on the camera it's not showing up as well as I had hoped but it looks pretty good and once I have finished the actual engraving and I've completed all those lovely flowers at the bottom I need to grab a damp cloth and give this a wipe down so let's just finish all of these little leaves and flowers and I'll grab that cloth and we can wipe all of the dust off and then I'll give you a bit of a close up. So here I'm just wiping it all sort of upwards because I wanted to make sure I didn't sort of smear any or scratch any into the other stuff. And it's really kind of waterproof so you can add quite a bit of water and it doesn't do anything to it. I know I got a little bit of water on the back of my book but that dried pretty quickly. It was just a little bit off the cloth. So I'll just sort of tip it in case there are any leftover little drips or anything but here's a close-up of what it looks like you can see it picking up the light really well and it looks even more amazing in person you get this kind of like bright gold shine as you walk past it and it reflects things in the room really well so as you can see that's my face there and it's reflecting my blue shirt and all that sort of stuff it's really really pretty So now this is dry, I just want to flip it over and have a look at the back. As you can see, these three pens went through. Two of those are Sharpies and that thick one is like a thick permanent marker. They normally would go through paper. And on this other sheet, you've got a bit there where the water has made it a little bit buckled on the next sheet of paper, but nothing to worry about there. These ones here went through because they're permanent markers. They're not really made for paper, but I thought I would show you anyway because Sharpies are a good comparison to see if a Copic marker will work. As you can see, everything else worked, and even watercolour worked okay. So I'd recommend this. It would be okay for watercolour, but it's really good for water-based markers and for pencils. So definitely a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a sunshiny day.